Hello and welcome back to Stitching the High Notes. I'm Joanna and today I'm going to share what I read in February, oh it's a heavy stack, as well as a look at what I hope to read in March. Let's get started. Last month I did not read nearly as much as I had hoped for a variety of reasons that many of you who watch the channel will have already known. There were some curveballs thrown my way, but all in all it was a successful, wonderful month of reading. It was a mix of of I would say I don't I didn't have any like five star reads, but I had some books that exceeded my expectations and a couple that did not meet the expectations or one that I didn't meet the expectations that I had. So let's jump right into it. What I read last month. First up was Outlawed by Anna North. I mentioned this in my first booktube video of the six books that I was most excited to read in during uh, 2021. And this is the book that I mentioned that was a bit of a disappointment for me. This is about a woman named Ada who uh, is married at 17. This takes place in the late 1800s in the Wild West in Northern America. Uh, she is married and after about a year and a half is unable to conceive or have a child and her puritanical culture that she lives in um, casts her out and um, and this is all, it was very interesting, this is all stemming from a reaction to an earlier, probably pandemic, but a flu uh, pandemic that uh, happened actually in the US. I uh, forget the 18, I'll put up the year here. So it was a little bit surreal to read this as we're in the midst of our own pandemic <laughs> these days. But she is outcast. She uh, ends up uh, going to a convent and then decides, you know, I really want to find my calling of being a midwife, of which her mother was, and continuing on that tradition uh, and, fi and finding her own path. And she ends up joining a group of outlaws who are all on a mission to create a society that is more open and accepting as well. Um, I will say that the book started out very strong for me. The excitement was there. I started to get really into the characters and then probably a little bit before midway through the book, it lost all oomph, all drive. I lost all, the, the tone of the book didn't pick up in emotion for me and kind of the drive, the plot didn't move along. Um, I didn't feel as engrossed in or um, as attached to the characters as I had hoped to be. And it really didn't pick up until the very end of the book, which kind of left me with a bit of a sour taste at it because it was like, this was the book I was hoping for the whole time. So I ended up giving this a two star, which is maybe a little bit harsh over on Goodreads because it was okay, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, unfortunately. Um, if you read this book, I would love to know. This was my first uh, book of the month pick, um, and I'm still really glad that I read it, that I have it. Um, I, it's deemed as historical fiction, but I don't know, I don't know, I've seen some other reviews that say, would you really call this historical fiction? I guess, kind of, sorta, but... Um, it was a good story to read. It was very interesting. I, let's just say I'm glad it wasn't too long of a read <laughs> and it went fairly quickly, but I was really eager to move on to other things of which was next was my literati, literati book club pick. I chose to swap clubs on Literati and I'll have links down below to all of the books that I mentioned, my Goodreads if you want to follow along, as well as links to Literati and Book of the Month Club. Uh, I swapped clubs to Malala Yousafzai's club uh, because I really liked a lot of the books that she's chosen in the past uh, for her club as well as um, for this month on February. I wanted, it was Valentine's Day last month, and I wanted something light and easy and fun to read and was pleasantly surprised to see that she had picked such a book because she usually tends to pick really hard-hitting, thought-provoking books, which I'm looking forward to reading because I st 
spoiler alert, I stuck with her club for March. Um, but this one really intrigued me. So this is called The Wedding Date. It's by Jasmine Gilroy. I think that's how you say it. I'm probably saying it wrong. Um, and what intrigued me is that this takes place in the San Francisco Bay Area where I'm from. So I uh, thought it was going to be really fun to read about local places. It follows Alex, who's up here, and Drew down here. They meet at the Fairmont Hotel in an elevator. I believe it's a Fairmont, um, of which I've been to before. So it's just like, it's fun when you can actually picture where these characters are meeting and... Uh, where they're doing it because it was a romance um, and where they're where they work uh, she works in the mayor's office she's the chief of staff for the mayor of Berkeley and he lives in LA I want to see Santa Monica where he works at a children's um, he's a pediatrician or surgeon he works at a children's hospital so they have this long distance relationship and they are really navigating having falling in love but really having their first true relationship where they are open and vulnerable and a relationship where they don't want to run away from it and so they're resisting all of their urges and their fears they're facing their fears of um of things that they have experienced in their own lives their fears of losing somebody that they love and so they really go on this beautiful journey not only together but uh, within themselves and I don't know one person who doesn't identify with a lot of what these characters were going through in the book and it was just really sweet uh, really beautifully written I think I gave it three three and a half stars maybe um, and it was a nice light fluffy romance read um definitely romantic so it had some sexy time scenes it was nothing compared to a book i will be chatting about in a minute but um it was a lot of fun and i love the literati book club and how they segment their reading uh on their app of like different chapters that you can they'll go like chapters one through whatever and you talk about those chapters after you've read them and it was a really good pace you read about like 13 pages a day I think I read this within maybe a week ish or so um so it was a nice fast read so yeah definitely recommend if you're wanting a nice light-hearted romance Next up is a graphic novel, yet another graphic novel. I'm trying to read one once a month if I can. Uh, and this is Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This was recommended to me by Comixology, um, and it was as a result of reading the previous month's graphic novel, Sheets. Uh, I'll leave a link up, up above here in the corner and down below should you be interested in watching last month's uh, what I read kind of January wrap up. Um, but this book or this graphic novel was really, really lovely. It, um, I think I gave it four stars, I think. I highly recommend it. It's got a great sense of humor. The writing is spot on. And Noelle Stevenson, I've known about her from Critical Role, which is a RPG or role-playing game that I watch every week. Uh, she's been a guest on there a couple of times, as well as she is uh, the writer and showrunner of the latest a reboot of She-Ra, which I think just ended over on Netflix. I watched a few episodes or maybe the first season of that um, and loved it. I was a huge She-Ra fan when I was a kid. I had a cake. I just I loved She-Ra. So I knew that this was going to be a really great story because she's a fantastic writer, um, very thoughtful in her character development. What it is about, I'm just going to straight up read it from the Goodreads description because it's just perfect. So let's see. Namona is an impulsive young shapeshifter with a knack for villainy. Lord Ballister Blackheart is a villain with a vendetta. As sidekick and supervillain, Namona and Lord Blackheart are about to wreak havoc, some serious havoc. Their mission proved to the kingdom that Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin, how about that for a name? I mean, I love it. Uh, and his buddies at the Institution of Law Enforcement and Heroics. I mean, just the, 
the, the titles of things are hilarious in themselves. So this institution aren't, they aren't the heroes everyone thinks they are. But as small acts of mischief escalate into a vicious battle, Lord Blackheart realizes that Nimona's powers are as murky and mysterious as her past. And her unpredictable wild side might be more dangerous than he is willing to admit. It is just a wonderful, lovely story um, about facing your inner demons and uh, being true to yourself. And just if you're a fan of graphic novels, or if not, if you want to try one out, I love it. And I loved the artwork. I probably was showing you some of it on the screen, but loved it. Great. And finally, I feel like I need to have a sound effect for this one. This was a big boy. I just finished this a couple of days ago. Over 700 pages. This is the long-awaited fourth official installment, minus the Christmas special one that we had, <laughs> of the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Mass. I have been looking forward to this for some time and received it the day that it was published. I got very lucky that I got my, my delivery on time and oh my goodness, where to begin? Where to begin? So this is following the characters Nesta and Cassian from the uh, first trilogy of books, um, which are mainly about the characters Feyre and Rhysand. This takes place in a fantasy fey world. Uh, the first three novels were young adult, edging on adult, and this one is adult. <laughs> I will probably turn a little bit red as I am talking about this book because, oh my goodness, it is sexy. I knew it would be some sexy times. I had heard that it was going to be more risque, but whew, this this would make uh, Outlander fans blush. Well, let me just say that. But that all being said, uh, it was just so wonderful to be with these characters again. The plot twists, the... Um, emotions, the high emotions, the love, the the character development and journey that these characters go through. There were, I will say, my one criticism is that, of course, always spoiler free, but is that the main character uh, near the end of the book uh, makes some decisions that, or and even just the style of the writing, it felt very rushed near the end of the book for me. Um, it fell back into some young adult tropes um, of being a little bit more, I'm still formulating this, but it's still feeling a little bit more dependent, just younger. It just felt like a younger character all of a sudden than what she was at the beginning of the book and throughout the course of the book. Uh, and that went for all of the other characters as well. It was almost like maybe the end of the book was written before the beginning and the middle of the book, if that makes any sense. So um, it felt a little out of place. Um, and I've heard similar things from from other readers. That all being said, I loved it. I just loved being swept away. It came at a time that was perfect where I just really needed to escape on certain days. And um, I'm looking forward to future books. There are definitely hints of uh, other characters being fully um, explored. And um, yeah, it's just a real fun book. And just what an achievement to read such a big book so quickly. It uh, came on February 16th and I finished it a couple of days. So that's pretty good given work and uh, some stuff going on with the family and everything. So pretty good. I will say it definitely has the YA like big print and everything so I mean it's not like you know some some books this size which are you need a magnifying glass although I, ha I do have my gigantic reading glasses so yeah highly I, I would recommend it I think I gave it a 3.5 because I would recommend it if you love a good fantasy good story to be swept away good romance um, but for some folks, it might still be a little heavy on the YA tropes or uh, fantasy might not be your thing. And also, like, it's uh, NC-17 or whatever the rating is. Woo! <laughs> 
And now for what I have already started this month in March or what I also hope to read this month. First up is a book that I have living right here. I actually usually take it out of the dust jacket, but I put it back in for you all. This is actually my book of the month club pick for February that I didn't get to. This is the Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I haven't read any of her books before, but I know of them and I have many friends who are like, oh, tell me what you think about this book. So this, just really briefly off the top of my head, takes place during the Dust Bowl here in America. It's an historical fiction uh, and follows the story of a family navigating um, that time. And what spoke to me about this book is that I actually have family, um, most of my family heritage uh, is from the Midwest, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and uh, my Grammy specifically, um, probably lived a very similar, grew up in a very similar um, um, environment to the characters in this book. So I really wanted to read this to learn more about what she went through and um, learn a little bit more about my ancestry and history. Yeah, I don't know if you call your, your grandmother ancestors, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so very much looking forward to that. I started the, started this last night and have already immediately been, been uh, sucked into the story. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. The next book that I have already started is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And it's a practical guide to personal freedom. I've had this on my... TBR to be read list for a very long time. Um, many people have recommended this over the years. I've seen people read it, say that it's life changing. Um, and I was spurred on to do this with the Yoga with Adrian uh, group. Um, they have a book club as well. And so I wanted to take part. They did this last month. So I am kind of picking up and going to join in any lingering discussions that are happening in the group, which I'll leave a link down below if you are interested. Um, in general, it is about four agreements with yourself. It's philosophical, um, look at life and understanding of human nature, I would say, just really broadly. Um, it says, reveals the source of self-limiting beliefs that rob us of joy and create needless suffering. Based on ancient Toltec wisdom, the four agreements offer a powerful code of conduct that can rapidly transform our lives to a new experience of freedom, true happiness, and love. So very much I'm just already blown away. I've read the beginning and the first chapter so far, the first agreement. Um, I posted this on Instagram the other day that I had started this and um, that the amount of truth bombs just in the beginning of the book are overwhelming and amazing. I haven't even taken... I haven't even made any earmarks or underlined anything because I would be doing it for the whole book essentially. And I love the size of it because it's definitely going to be one that I go back to, uh, read often and meditate on and journal about. So I'm really trying to soak this up, not rush through it, or I might just reread it right away. So I'm really looking forward to taking part in the discussion about it as well, which I think will reinforce any lessons that I need to learn uh, from reading this. So let me know if you've read this book. I asked that on Instagram and was blown away that many of you have read this over the years. So I already highly, highly recommend. I've started a couple of new audiobooks, and I have one that I haven't listened to in a while, and that's uh, still Barack Obama's latest memoir. That is one I just go listen to off and on. Um, but two audiobooks that I started, one I started last month and one I just started, I think, yesterday. Um, I'm looking forward to finishing up in this month, in March. The first is another Clara Parks book, since I so enjoyed Vanishing Fleece in January, and that is A Stash of One's Own, Knitters on Loving, Living With, and Letting Go of Yarn. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory what it's about. It's exploring um, knitters and their relationships with their stash and their stories and um, I'm really, really enjoying it. It has, I think, three different narrators. So um, 
yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. Uh, the next audiobook that I just started is Shadow and Bone, which is the first of the Grisha series, another fantasy YA series. Um, uh, my friends really rec highly recommended this book, uh, and it's a lot of fun to listen to while I sew. Uh, and there is a Netflix series that is about to come out pretty soon, so I wanted to listen to it and... and yeah, I'm, I'm liking it so far. It's definitely light and fluffy. Um, and honestly, I think I'm ready for a little bit of a break from fantasy. So we'll see how far I get with this one this month. But uh, it's not as high on my priority list to listen to it. But it's a nice, nice one to listen to. The next book for March that is higher up in the uh, priority list is my Literati Malala book club uh, pick. And that is Aftershocks by Nadia Awusu. Um, and this is a memoir. Uh, I'll just read briefly what it says in the Goodreads description. It's a poetic genre bending work, blending memoir with cultural history. Um, and it follows Nadia Wu's Awusu grapples, uh, how she grapples with the fault lines of identity, the meaning of home, uh, black womanhood, and the ripple effects, both personal and generational of emotional trauma. Uh, it's her story of, um, of growing up, um, as an immigrant, I believe. And so I'm really looking forward to reading this perspective, her story. I've heard it's very, very moving. Obviously, I trust in Malala's pics. Um, uh, and given uh, not only the wedding date and the light heartedness of it, but also the previous pics and reading previous discussions um, about the books that she has chosen. So looking forward to this book as well. And there are two more books that I would love to squeeze in this month. I want to get back on track with reading the book of the month club pick in the designated month. Uh, and the book that I chose is on its way very soon. And that is The Final Revival of Opal and Nev. Uh, this is a poignant fictional oral history of the beloved rock and roll duo who shot to fame in the 70s in New York. Um, and it's a story that's dark and fraught uh, with lies and secrets um, about the peak of their stardom. Uh, and I think it's told from the perspective, if I remember the sample that I read correctly, um, of their daughter, I think, um, who is now a journalist. So it's, it's, it sounds very, very interesting. Uh, and the sample that I read, uh, that I read, that I read, uh, really sucked me into the story. So I'm really looking forward to trying it out. Then uh, that's what I love about book club picks is that it, sometimes it's um, something that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on your own. That being said, I did order two other ones <laughs> with the book of the month club. What I love about it is that you can, you pay your fee, uh, not sponsored by Literati and Book of the Month Club, although that I would love it if I was, um, but you pay a fee, I think it's $25 for a book of the month, um, and you get access to, this is like a debut novel, I think it might even be early release, um, so you get access to really great books um, ahead of time or exposed to amazing books ahead of time, but you get discounts on additional books that were past book of the month picks uh, for like $9.99. So you save a lot of money. Um, and so this time I also ordered a different pick um, that I was aiming towards, which was uh, The Last or The Lost Apothecary. I'll put it up here on the screen. And then I got, um, what is it? The Secret History as well, which I keep hearing uh, people recommend or a lot of people read it last year. So I'm interested in that. Not to be read this month, but just to add to my growing collection, some of this is going to have to move over soon for my books. Just saying. The last book I wanted to highlight is The Paris Library, which I mentioned in my top six books that I want to read. We'll see if I get to it this month. It might be an April book. It keeps getting pushed off. Uh, I have a couple of friends who are reading it right now and are really enjoying it, so I'm eager to get to that book as well. 
So that's gonna do it for this month's booktube review and look back and look ahead. I hope you enjoy that you're inspired to read as well. Let me know what you're reading right now or what you read last month if you have any recommendations. So let's all uh, comment down below and chat about books and I will see you all next time, hopefully on Sunday for another studio vlog. Bye.